I'm Philip Wright. I advise farmers on soils, structure and cultivations. And we're here today at uh, Cookswold, North Lincolnshire, to look at uh, aspects of remediation following pigs. And we're going to look at soil structure, how to identify problems, how to identify the key depths, and then how to remediate some of the issues that we find in the field. So when assessing a field uh, to decide the type of cultivations to, to, to consider, the depths and, and extent of the cultivations, it's very important really to start by looking at the, the surface of the field and seeing if there are any big differences. For example, you can see behind me here, we've got a big difference between the turning headland of the field and the rest of the field. So that's inevitably going to imply that it may be we do different depths of cultivation because the extent of the damage is different. And it's important not to over cultivate to go too deep, particularly when soil loosening, because that costs a lot of, of diesel, a lot of effort. And more importantly, when you go too deep, you're actually working into uncompacted soil at depth, which can squeeze that up against the problem, which can be a counterproductive action. So the first stage really is to, is to look at the field, assess different extremes of the problem and go and dig a few holes and, and actually decide on the, uh, on the actual depth to cultivate too. Okay, so pretty basic one this, how to dig a hole. Obviously choose an area of the field that's in this case quite compacted. When you're digging, try and dig just two faces. So you leave yourself two faces to examine because we're going to compress these faces quite, quite a lot with a spade, which is going to make a difference to the actual structure. So <coughs> leave yourself a couple of faces. It's the classic really, we're not digging a fence post hole going all the way around it. We're just trying to keep to two sides with the digging. As you progress deeper, you'll start to feel the soil getting a little bit looser, probably getting to the extent <coughs> and depth of the problem. If you dig holes when it's dry, the soil will be, will be strong and it'll be more difficult to dig anyway because it's dry. Uh, so you've got to remember that when you're looking at the structure. In an ideal world, you're best off digging really when the soil is at field capacity because any, any sort of layers that are formed through compaction will be shown up by water running across and out of those layers. Now it's drier, it's very much more difficult to see that. So we're relying really on the visual appearance of the soil, what the porosity looks like, and obviously the presence and extent of any roots that are in there. So we're in a compacted part of the field here, and it's quite easy to spot layers, platy layers of soil, where the soil breaks, breaks away in little plates. As you can see here, horizontal fissures showing that generally the structure is compacted. When the soil starts to break away more vertically, as it will start to as I go deeper in the hole, particularly down here, the strength gets less, slightly moister, but the soil starts to break away more vertically. And if we look at the porosity, although it's not immediately obvious, it's probably slightly more porosity down here than there is in these layers at the surface where it's very, very tight and the porosity is very low. So if you've got low porosity, you see how it's breaking away horizontally here. It's telling us that naturally any fissures, any soil, any water movement, any root movement will be horizontal through the soil as opposed to vertical. So what we're trying to get to is a structure that will absorb the water and hold on to it, almost act like a sponge. So we need porosity to do that and we need openness and a, and a, and a lack of this 
horizontal platiness, which you can see here in the surface uh, quite clearly actually here, where whenever I move the soil, it's trying to break away horizontal. Here, as I come deeper, it starts to break away more vertically. That's indicating that the extent of this trafficking damage is not that great, really. It's quite, it's quite shallow. It's, it's within the top 15, maybe 20 centimetres. OK, so quite a contrast here. Again, similar uh, chalky, sandy loam soil, but very much less compacted. This is an area of the field that's not had very much in the way of trafficking or compaction. We do get just that normal tendency of these soils to run together on the surface, but overall you can see that the structure is breaking away very easily. There's some reasonably good porosity for the type of soil it is. There's some roots in here. We've got some earthworm channels, and you can see possibly here on a, a piece I've, I've just dug away, we've got, we've got some earthworms working in there and you can see just how easily that soil breaks apart. And some good pores, some good little holes created by both worms down there, and also roots which help to hold the soil apart and together. They do both things. Right near the surface, again, you can probably see there some good little porous holes there where smaller earthworms have, have, have come to the surface and they've started to take, take, take into the surface the surface residue here that's, that's, that's about. So where you've got structure like this, there's really no point in upsetting it by doing extensive moving because you're going to destroy a lot of these natural channels that are there in the first place that are giving you good pathways. So sometimes less is more. Uh, you don't need to do anything more than necessary. So if, the, for example, the machine was set to do the job we found on the headland, which would be down to about 20, 23, 25 centimetres deep to get under that compaction. If we did that here, we'd be wasting our time because the soil is in very good condition. So we, we, we've dug here in a, a pretty good part of the field, very little damage, and only probably a metre away, we've got a trafficked area, which is extending down, down slope to quite a distance, and it's a, it's a very fair point that where you have trafficking runs down slope, there's a, there's a tendency then for water to, to start to run and start to erode and create all the problems that we're trying to avoid. So it's, if it's possible to try and avoid direct down slope runs, or if you've got to do them, try and intercept them with, with some cross cultivations of some description to try and avoid a big amount of water running downhill. So again, a third, a third hole just to assess the effect of this, of this compacted area compared to the non. I guess you can probably see immediately this platy type effect here. It's where that classic platy, platy structure. By the time we get to the, the bottom of the spade, we've lost that. So it's a, a, a relatively shallow effect, possibly extending no more than 100, 120 millimetres. So we've got very marginal, we've got slightly more severe, and then we've got a very severe effect on the headland. So you've got to sort of take a view now as to how you set the machine. I'm not expecting you to set the machine continually differently for every single distinct part of the field. But I think if, if, you, if you were to set it to take, alleviate this type of depth of a problem, you, you'll cope with most of the, of the body of the field. And then when we're on the headland, I would strongly suggest resetting the machine to do a specific job on the headland, go deeper there to accommodate that problem. So when cultivating at a particular depth, the other thing that's very important to consider is the moisture content of the soil at the depth you're moving it down to. And when you're digging and checking those depths, basically just grab a lump of soil from the depth that you need to work, roll it between the palms of your hands and see, gauge the moisture content of that soil. 
you can see here as I'm rolling it, it's, it, it's crumbling, it's on the edge of crumbling. So that's what we would call friable. Uh, it's not for, for forming a long plastic worm, it's, it's quite friable. So it's going to be in a, in a moisture state that's going to break up and, and start to reduce uh, in size and start to reduce the large compacted uh, clods and lumps. If instead of that nice crumbly friable nature, when you, when you start to roll it out, you get this type of action where it's a, basically staining your hand and it's forming a long plastic worm, then unfortunately the moisture is too high, it's too wet to do effective loosening. At this moisture status, the, the, the soil is going to fail by compression. It's going to compress together when you try and move it with metal, as opposed to fracture and move apart and shatter and give you, and give you a, a soil that roots can get down through. This will be very, very more likely to compress. And as a result of that, there is no point in doing that operation at the time. The only effective operation I would suggest you consider, and not on these soils, would be to mould rain when soil is of this moisture consistency.